Hey everyone, hello from the Hoboken Historical Museum. We're streaming out live, seven o'clock Thursday night, and you can check us out on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. This is Hoboken Talks. We're on again every Thursday night, and we're here to talk about Hoboken. Uh, my name's Bob Foster. I'm the director at the Hoboken Historical Museum, and uh, we have a really great guest tonight. I don't say that every show, but this one is Stella. And we're talking with Anthony Romano. Welcome, Anthony. Anthony should be coming up on the screen any moment. There he is. Anthony is also Commissioner Romano. But we're really here to talk about your Hoboken roots and why you're so passionate about Hoboken. Captain welcome. Ca welcome. Captain Romano is my favorite title. Okay, Captain Romano, I forgot about that. It's You're the guest, so we'll call you whatever you want. And we're here to have fun and just have a real it's conversation. An it's an honor to be invited uh, to Hoboken Talks. And uh, Bob, thank you for all the work that you do to uh, share the history of Hoboken with those that haven't uh, been born and raised here and uh, understand what a great city this is. Yep, we're in it together, right? Um, so let's just start off. What's this great background and what's it mean to you? Louise and Jerry's uh, is my is and uh, was my aunt and uncle's uh, business that they uh, rented in 1958 and completely purchased in 1959. It was a um, Holland German Siemens uh, tavern called the Old Nolandia before that. Louise is my aunt, my mother's sister, and Jerry was her husband. So you're carrying on the tradition of running this establishment. Yes, after they passed on, my father and my mother did, and now and might as well give the address 329 washington street tell us a little bit about louise actually because a lot of people when they talk about louise and jerry's they just talk about louise they don't mention jerry for the most part and there's a little uh, enigma there who are they well uh, my uncle jerry when he came back from the war he had uh some kind of uh, family disagreements from the establishment that he left on monroe street um uh, Fifth and Monroe, and he had lost control of that establishment uh, to his brothers and sisters. So he decided to come up here and he uh, purchased Louise and Jerry's. He was a member of Patton's Third Army. He served uh, with gallantry and uh, it was many rewards, awards rather, at um, from the war. And then he, my Aunt Louise, worked at uh, Hind and Douch in the factories. And they lived on Fifth and Park Avenue. And uh, they uh, first rented it. And Louise then uh, came up when my Uncle Jerry started to get sick with a heart condition. My Uncle Jerry bartended first. And then as his heart condition worsened, my aunt quit her job and started to take up the slack and started to bartend to actually till the day she had the stroke uh -huh. many years later. And I don't know that company, Hound and... Hind and Douch. It was a paper factory uh, located uh, in the uh, back part of Hoboken. Uh, probably, I think it was... Uh, 11th and Madison, 11th and Monroe, around there, 13th. Okay, sure. So that's not the big factory all the way on the it's west. One of them, that... yes. There was Al there was Alco down there. There was a few different factories. Sure. Yeah. But by the time I was uh, um, born, it was phasing out in the early 60s. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Uh, I know we have some great slides, and they're, I think, sort of chronological. So let's go through some Those of them. Those neons are, wow. Beers With, that don't exist anymore. Yeah, Valentine uh, was the big Schaefer beer at the time, wow. Schaefer. Um, Budweiser we still have, right? Yeah. But the other Rheingold is gone. That's up there, too, up in the right, left corner. Right, right, right. The Three Rings was yeah, Rheingold? Yeah. No, Three Rings is Valentine. Valentine, On the left is of course, Rheingold, yeah. of course. But one of those was like the Yankee beer. Mel or... Allen, Valentine. Okay. okay, yeah, definitely, definitely. So who were these people? The, uh, the gentleman in the uh, police uniform is my late father, uh, Anthony L. Romano. He rose also to the rank of captain in the Hoboken Police Department. He became a police officer in 1956, I think it was. And that's my Aunt Louise. Uh, and as you can see, that's the early, I think that's the bar in its infancy when they had it with that tapestry uh, uh, on the wall. Mm -hmm. It's great wallpaper. I'm trying to make it out. Uh, it looks like uh, kind of a city. Yeah, nice. Um, so um, had you always wanted, like your dad, it could have been your, uh, maybe I'm guessing, was your role model to be in the police? In fact, I never had intentions of becoming a police officer. Um, 
but it, it just it happened. I uh, after college, I had taken the test, and uh, my father wasn't happy about it at first. He wanted me to go to law school or work in the financial district in the city. But I, I tried it, and I fell in love with the uh, job. I think it's a very noble profession, and if you do it for the right reasons, there can't be a better satisfying job in the world. Um, could you share some real satisfying moments in the force? Well, there's uh, when you catch people um, at their worst, and you can help them. Uh, there was incidents, for example, during fires, making sure people get out of the buildings. There was uh, when I had to. Um, deliver the messages to the families of uh, that were deceased from the World Trade Center. It was very gut wrenching, mm. um, was a very tough thing. Um, when we captured uh, um, either uh, someone that uh, was uh, doing purse snatching uh, in uh, uptown Hoboken. Um, and uh, we had also um, uh, when I was I, I had the pr privilege of working narcotics for some months and uh, making some uh, raids and learning about that and seeing drugs taken off the street and also uh, seeing senior citizens made to feel safe and when you when you catch someone that's uh, a burglar or talking someone off uh, third and monroe on a sunday morning of committing suicide off his fire escape on a sunday morning i, re I remember that um, and you know people really do appreciate uh, when police do help them right so the police station is now on uh, Hudson Street, 106 right? Hudson. Uh, tell us about where it was before, because you would go back to that sure. era. When I first became a police officer, it was in the basement of City Hall, where it originally was. Um, and then we had outgrown it, and the conditions were, were very intolerable uh, for, for health reasons um, in, the, uh, in the bottom floor. So a decision was made by the uh, city leaders at that time uh, to get and purchase a uh, another location. Right. I, c I can remember it when it was on 90, off of Newark yes. Street. I think there. 92, I think, it, we moved. 91, 92. Right, right. And the, uh, the second precinct had already been closed for many years. Sure. And or people aren't going to know about the second precinct. What, since it you was mentioned quite a it. beautiful structure right on the corner of 12th and Willow. As I was growing up, I grew up on Willow Avenue. That was the Uptown Recreation Center. It had already been closed I think by early 60s for as a police precinct, but it was a gorgeous structure. It had uh, cells, the old beautiful police desk, uh, and then mysteriously it burned down. In fact, they had to fill the basement to seal the jail cells when they were building the uh, structure that's on there now. I don't know if it's condominiums or rentals, but that's what's there now. Interesting. And um, so has the force, I, I know you're retired, but has the, are there a lot more people on the force than those days or? Well, you know, it's ironic. If you go back to the history of Hoboken around the time of World War I, there was over 210 police officers with a population of Hoboken had in, in the 70,000s, 70, 72,000. Uh, at one point when I came on, the, the numbers were very low uh, in, the, in the police officer rank. I think they were around 80 only. And we built back up to uh, almost 200 again. And I keep a, still a close relationship with the police department now involved in a lot of the activities. Um, I've been fortunate to be elected to the president of the police credit union, which was one of the first ones uh, credit unions established in 1946 by Steve Cappiello and Dick Carroll. And um, it, it, uh, it was really, it, it was uh, necess uh, necessitated uh, to this growth of, um, you know, the police department that now we need offices, but because a lot of people don't want the job because of what's going on, uh, they're in dire need of at least 30 new offices. Really? Wow. Mm. Um, so when you walk around Hoboken or drive around Hoboken and you, you know, you know these streets, you know it as a police officer, but you know it from growing up here. And you got to smile a little bit of how this town has changed. Uh, could you talk a little bit about those changes? Sure. Uh, you know, it's two ways to feel about that. Obviously, the city now aesthetically is definitely a better place than it was. Uh, Safety of all the buildings through the new fire codes and the new building codes has, has you know, made it definitely much safer. Uh, but as I walk through the town, you definitely have memories. Uh, Willow Avenue is especially dear to my heart, uh, 10th and 11th and Willow. And that whole block has changed. You and I had discussed all the different, you were kind of amazed at all the different stores that were there or businesses. 
uh, and, and, you know, the different garment factories, when the uh, lunch whistle went off, there could be 300 workers either in the area of 10th or Observer and Park or on 14th Street, the shipyard workers. It was very, uh, a very hard uh, uh, immigrant town, even back then, but of uh, workers and there were many factories. And I think people don't realize that the Hoboken then is not the Hoboken now. This is more of now a white collar city. Uh, than it was then uh, but to see some of the businesses i'm looking on the wall i see stands stands was here as a kid that's where my father took me to get your baseball uh and athletic um stuff and and it's good to see some business louise and jerry's i have to say that gina and uh gina is the manager her and her staff uh and and pam they do a great job in, in keeping up the tradition at louise and jerry's so there's some businesses that have still been uh active and the new ones give new life to hoboken but uh, when I walk Willow Avenue, it's especially sentimental. Sure. Um, maybe we'll go on with some of the pictures. Uh, and uh, again, your dad has such a great jawline. I have to say that. He did, he was never a boxer. Yes, he was. He, he was. In the, okay. uh, during World War II, uh, when he was in the Navy, I think that's how he broke his nose okay. a few times. <laughs> right. But uh, I don't know where this picture is. I think this is might be my uh, in Jersey City uh, somewhere. Uh, but I'm not sure. Right, and is he holding you? Yeah. Uh, Precious Rocky, cargo? Rocky's holding me, yeah. Um, <laughs> but he's such a, I mean, he's such a big guy, and then that jawline, and then he's holding an infant. It's so, it's such a cool shot. Yeah, he, um, I, I love my father, and uh, he was a good father. And uh, see, I, this picture I only found recently. I never seen that uh, right. until uh, the magazine uh, did the story, H Mag. Uh huh. And I and I found it. Right, right. And I think I see a tear almost. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, you know, he he passed on uh, quite a few years ago from uh, cancer. Uh huh. Uh, but sure. Well, it's a really proud moment. You're. I I think you can read a lot into that. Okay. <laughs> Ironically, with this badge, um, uh, that was my father's badge as a police officer, number seven. And uh, many years later, I, I, what, 20 years later, I was a police officer, 21 or 22, I would wear the same badge. So I don't know if that was a, a pre premonition yeah. or, or what, but this was another picture that uh, this was taken uh, where I was born on Hudson Street, 200 Hudson Street, which is now the Sushi Lounge. It was Shanghai Lily's um, bar and brothel underneath, uh, but uh, it was... Uh, you know that's I I because of the couch I could so I faintly remember that couch. So again, you're wearing your dad's badge yes. in this, so it's sort of uh, premonitions, and it's right on your heart, and that's pretty cool. And I, of course, I can't let Shanghai Lilies go by. <laughs> uh, so, what's your not your connection there, but your memory? My memory is very obviously. I was very young when we moved out of there, but. Um, there was the firehouse next door, and I can almost remember the sound of the fire engines making me cry or scared. And I remember my father telling me later on, we were in the hospital talking, she was a, a German woman with beautiful red hair. I remember that with an older husband named Fritz, and they had two little what you'd call dash hounds now, and I called them hot dogs when I was a kid. And, um, and you would come in at night at the house there, and the area started to change. Uh, at that time and it was a you know a rough area on hudson street and um you go in a hallway and they could be the the girls with the sailors and you know to make your way up the stairs and i remember my father telling me later on he said dad why would they call a shanghai lily she was german and he said <laughs> because they shanghai the sailors so i thought it was a you know funny story mm -hmm. and i seen her later on as a young police officer she would sit at the window of applied housing on Bloomfield Street, where she lived in her 90s. And she had the hair, but it wasn't as, re as red as it was, but she was there and she remembered me and I, I used to say hello to her. And so, I mean, I was a police officer, so we're going back years. And then she pr probably definitely died in her 90s. Wow. So this would be the firehouse that's now a bank? Yes. In the parking lot? Yes, that and was fire then, headquarters. And then um, right next door is the, in a sense, the new police station. Right, which was the Longshore. Well, it was all tenements. That's right. And then the Longshoreman building, I think was built in the, maybe in the 60s. When they yeah, came. it was ILA medical facility. Yeah, the urban renewal came and they destroyed uh, where the Marine views are now. 
Sure. Uh, all that was, and was sort of sometimes known as the Barbary Coast. The, yeah, on, on the River Street on side. On the River Street. Yeah. Ironically, on the Hudson Street side, there were beautiful homes with right. olive gardens that the the, uh, the people had put there. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And we always say that it's a good thing urban renewal didn't hit the rest of the town, right? I mean, so much of our architectural integrity, uh, we almost could say it was there, but good thing it didn't get knocked down. Well, my father was working the night. He told me the story when they came in with the bulldozers to take down the Stevens Castle. That was done. They come in at night, and the next day it was down. That was in, I think, uh, what was that? 59. 59, I think, I think it was. Yeah, that's yeah. what he said. Sure. Something like that. But and, mm -hmm. and thank God a lot of, uh, even with the old school, when we uh, played stickball in Wallace on uh, 11th and Willow, that was a beautiful red schoolhouse. And which the new one pales in comparison to the beautiful architecture that was. You had that and you had the um, second precinct. Sure. So stickball. So I actually did, uh, you know, back then everyone had nicknames and uh, you have a nickname Stick Romano. So I think I was betting with uh, Anthony Delaquella where Stick came from. And he said it was because you were pretty slender and you played stickball. Is that accurate? Yes, my uh, my cousins, Michael and James, uh, Lisa on, uh, by Wallace, uh, which was we played not on the bounce, it was against the wall fastball and it was the high bouncer, not the dead ball, which was the 35 cents as opposed to the quarter <laughs> we used to get at Steve's used to try to slip us the other one. But uh, yeah, um, and that my my cousin, my James, Lisa and uh, Michael, they they gave me that name when I was about 10, 10 right, years old. Right. And then it was gone until uh, we, the cable TV resurrected it when we did we do the uh, cable TV show. Sure. But uh, I guess also every, not everyone, but a lot of kids were named Anthony. So that was the way that everybody had a yeah. nickname. Yeah. Everybody. Can you remember them. some? Sure. Sure. Yeah, give, give me a couple. Okay. Um, let me see. Uh, when you go downtown, I mean, you had Chicky, you had, um, I mean, um, uh, my cousin James, we called Buffalo because he was so strong. Uh, you had, uh, you know, from the, the hockey guys uh, down there, um, there were some names that would be Ski, it would be short for uh, Savitsky. You had uh, Kazi Ramos, Billy Bang, um, Pointy Shoes, Dave Hanley, because he always wore pointy shoes. He was uh, from the bar. Brooklyn, his real name would was. Would that be Tom Hanley's brother? No, no, they no, they were Dave Hanley. Uh, he passed on about ten years ago. They the the guys that hung out at the time, what you know it now as the bar at Tenth the Willow, was called the Uptown Cafe, which okay. was quite a, quite a. It looked it was like the uh, the Long Branch Saloon in the Dodge City, Kansas. There was a, I remember Dennis Logan riding a horse down Willow Avenue, rode it into the bar. Actually, and that's a true story. We were sitting there in a hot night, sitting out the kids on the corner. So this was not a parade. It was just no, no, a, he, he, he an outing. Him. Yes, Dennis. He used to like to jump into Hudson and, and try to swim across to New York. So he was quite a character. That bar was full of characters. Mm -hmm. And you had Michael Jidja, uh, Lisa. Um, you know, my father was Rocky. had uh, Frankie Tata. Um, you know, all, all Hoboken. Uh, you know, they were really... It was a thing in Hoboken and Jersey City. Everybody had nicknames. And... Um, you know, a lot of people are gone. There was but there's still here, Buddy Matthews. Nobody called him Charles. Uh, you know, Joe Shotzi Reinhardt, Walter Binky Labrink. Uh, there was just quite a quite a cast of characters. Sounds but it gave Hoboken a, a sense of uh, you know being you missed that Johnny Pep Delafave. Uh, it was really people, you know, I'm I'm a more recent arrival, but people will always tell me, wow, there used to be so many more characters <laughs> around town. And I just look them straight in the eye and say, we, it's now our turn. We are the characters. Yes. So, but I don't know if nicknames are as... as, as nicknames, not as much, no. but I meant those, the characters. Oh, they had, um, I mean, they had, everybody had, it was Marty Motts, uh, most of the cops, there was, uh, you know, just some of the names were just, uh, there was Spike Costello, which was a big family. Uh, you know, they, Mounzi Romano, because he was a great pitcher. And there was Honey Romano, that's his brother, who was the ball player. So there was a, a quite a you know a, a lot of a lot of nicknames, especially in the police department. I remember when I got there, they all had nicknames, and growing up, we all had nicknames. That's how you knew everybody. Sounds sounds good. Um, so we have Zeus Aviedo. Uh, oh, my good buddy Zeus. Zeus, uh, my neighbor in Marine View. Oh, excellent! And he's saying, "Don't forget Yankee, Yankee Bob. Bob." That's right. So he's, who's Yankee Bob? <laughs> Hi Val. And Yankee Bob was. Um, he had some uh, mental issues. He used to walk around with the radio um, and listen to the Yankees. He was a devout 
an avid Yankee fan. He was, he was a nice, a nice man. He really was. Um, he was again, part of the Hoboken history and the fabric, you know, you're like Mickey, the wise guy, Yankee, Bob, uh, Luddy door, uh, who was real name was Ludwig <laughs> Hank, you know, it was just, uh, Roger Kalman is saying, I remember a corporal Benny who used to drink at the eighth street tavern in the late sixties. That's, I'm sorry to say, Roger, that's that's a little before me. I uh, <laughs> I, I was in grammar school, and okay. right. right. But and uh, there's another one. So uh, Roger said, Benny, uh, Corporal Benny, right? You know, and and there was uh, uh, you know so many, and everybody identified. Nobody knew the last names. Most of the time, it was uh, right. you know that right. Um, and uh, Valerie Huffnagel just gave a shout out a few uh, minutes. Valerie, ago thank you for all you do for the museum and for the uh, horticulture in Hoboken. You're a tremendous asset. Um, so, uh, moving on with pictures and, uh, that's obviously your dad and who else is there? You're, he's holding you. That's my father holding me. And that's uh, a cousin of mine. Uh, my father was his godson. I have that watch. That was his watch. Uh, right. when he went in the Navy gotcha. think, uh, from Ferris, I'm not sure. And is that a Davy Crockett rifle? Or? Yeah, um, <laughs> you're right. It is. I think it I is. <laughs> I, it is. I used to, yes. I recognize the stock. Yes. Yes. Right. But it looks like we got tanks on the right yes. too. So who so knows? Just, well, you want to laugh. I still found again in the basement, some of the uh, soldiers for Apache. I, the tank, I don't, I don't have. Right. Oh, exactly. Right. Great. And we oh, that uh, will go on. So that's that same wallpaper. And so that's in the bar. Or? Uh, yes, that's yeah. in the bar. And that's going to be your mom. That's my mother. Wow. Mary, uh, yeah. And when I saw these, I, I think I said she she liked to dress. Yes, in fact, I still have the mink coats <laughs> <laughs> that she. Has, but you know, nobody wears mink anymore. But right. it's a shame. And she I'm trying it. to figure out what you're wearing around your neck. It's like a I don't know, instrument, I think, or no, I think well, I think it might have been after baseball or something. Okay, sure. something going on. Yeah. Telling it that time. one. I wow, where did you get that one? That was that in my pictures. Yeah. Wow, I never seen yeah. that one. Definitely. Wow. It was stuck to one of the oh, others. Oh, wow. Um, and so what year is that around, circa? I'm trying to... 62. Okay. Okay. Sure. 61, 62. Yeah. And so would your mom, like you're going to Louise and Jerry's, the local bar, would your mom dress up to... She must have came. They must have came from some event. Right. And maybe that uh, they were watching. My aunt and uncle were babysitting me. Okay. okay or um, we're going there to eat. I think at that time, my Aunt Louise might have moved from Park Avenue to the bar. So she had she cooked in the bar. I know that there was a kitchen. So did that. that bar serve food? Yes, like at one food? point. Or no, she made uh, special dishes for the for the guys, for the longshoremen, and that she would make pasta vazul, pasta badan, um, different uh, uh, pa Italian dishes, and just uh, serve them. Oh, cool, cool. And... Uh, do you know Joe? Yes. Joe Menente? Yes. There's an interesting history of Joe Menente. Uh, uh, Eighth and Willow belong to the Blue Point, and, the oh, right. and that's, the that's Joe's family. family? That's he's all related. Azzolini, De Janeiro, Menente, and Joe's a, a, a great guy, too. It's great because we didn't give that much notice that you were appearing, so it's great people are finding they'll you. Be, they'll be throwing eggs, most people, if I appear at me. <laughs> okay. Um, your mom again? Uh, would she you? did like to dress up a yeah, lot. No, it's great. But I have a gun. Necklace. I have a gun in my hand. I didn't see this one either. <laughs> well, see, they're being blown up now, so we probably didn't. You couldn't wow. see your. Uh, that was a photo studio. Gun. I don't know where that is. Yeah. I don't have a clue. It's not. We're, it's not People's on Washington Street. That's another one. Right. It's on Washington Street, obviously, but I don't know where. Right. So I'm, I'm trying to look the reflection in, in the yeah. the glass. What the it says, Gerard says. Mark Gerard Studios. Oh, you you can read well. Yes. Yeah, Mark I don't Gerard know that Studios. Hoboken name, but it looks like uh, you know there used to be a lot of studios on Washington. Photos. Well, studios. People's was the one that I remember. Yeah, definitely. It, I don't know where that one is. Sure. Wow. Sure. My mother did like to dress. It was okay. And with the gloves. Classic. My mother ironically worked at Stevens, and oh, the really? initial she had a self she had a Defense Department clearance. She worked in a Davidson lab for nuclear propulsion for the U.S. Navy. Wow. Uh, uh, with, with, with regard to the Nautilus and the Enterprise being the first uh, right. to have uh, nuclear and, and power. And like you said before, so many people lived in Hoboken, but also worked in Hoboken. And that's, a isn't, this is a different world. 
Yeah. Wow. Well, <laughs> that's the bar. I don't know if I, that's the bar. And that's uh, obviously Easter time. Yeah. Wow. I wonder where that, I don't remember how the bar looked like that. That's something I don't so remember. So if we dug behind the walls, would we find this wallpaper? No, in 2014, the bar was gutted right down to the brick okay. because everything was, uh, ironically, that bar was wheeled in on, on dollies by my uncle after the, what you're going to remember probably as most people as the town lunch, which was before the fire with Schaefer's was a very exclusive high end restaurant. Okay. And then there was a fire, I think in like 1960 or something. And my uncle, they, they ripped it out to make it a diner, the town lunch. And so my uncle, I think purchased the bar, whatever they changed it or however right. it was. I don't know. So I got confused. Schaefer's on um, Hudson place. No, no, or... no. Schaefer's where now is the uh, mad hatter. Next okay. to that at one of those buildings was the town lunch as I was growing up, but before that it was Schaefer's Schaefer's as opposed to the one on Hudson place was a diner. That was a more up upscale restaurant. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. Great shots. I love, I think you have suspenders there. Here's our good friend, Eric, Hello, who Eric. I've who've been trying to email because he's going to be a guest on the show, but something's been going wrong. So here we are communicating through text. How's it going, Eric? Uh, absolutely. Everyone lived and worked in Hoboken. Eric is our most frequent uh, listener and will be on the, a guest on the show in probably in December. Well, thank you, Eric, and good luck on the show. I'm sure you'll bring another aspect of Hoboken living. Yeah. Uh, uh, interesting shot. You're getting closer to Willow Avenue. This is 10th and Clinton, which is now a condominium complex. Uh, that was my mother's brother, Tony's gas station, Clinton Exxon. Um, that air conditioning sign, he was probably one of the first in the country to install air conditions in vehicles, not out of the factory. Uh, he bought that. It was a laundry when he came back from the war and he uh, was a laundry and he made it into the gas station, into a very successful business uh, until my aunt died and he lost heart and he leased it. And then it was sold later on to um, uh, amazing how cheap it was sold and uh, how uh, how the that they made millions on it later on. But that's right on the corner of 10th and Clinton. Right. So right across from Wallace. Much? No, no, Wallace yeah. is 11th. This oh, is okay. This would be across from the, the park, the register company. Marty's Luncheonette was on that corner. It abutted Jesse Ray Code Company. Across the street was National Cash Register. And on the side then was uh, um, Uncle Jidge's restaurant, Lisa's, the first location. And you went up the block, it was the Uptown Cafe. Uh, and you had Steve's Candy Store, which was also a bookie joint. And um, also you had Marty's uh, Dry Cleaner, Duke's Pharmacy, all in that area. And then you had Muse's Delicatessen, Hank's Delicatessen, Ralph and Rito's uh, Vegetables. And uh, that's... That's um, what you just did was amazing. Like you just, you just nailed every 25 foot property, like within 200 my, feet. My How many people a, can do that in Hoboken? Well, it was good, good people there. Uh, that was a real working class day. It was very diversified. A lot of people don't realize you had, you had the Irish, you had the Germans, you had the Italians, you had the Puerto Ricans. And, you know, believe it or not, it was it was a wonderful experience. We had the, the courts. We used to play lefty softball at night. In the daytime, they started the roller hockey, uh, all, the, all those guys and the older guys. And, and they were wonderful, uh, wonderful people, wonderful times. Lefty baseball? No, we had the rubber softball because you didn't want to lose it. We would play in the, that last tennis court, which now abuts the picture of Michael Chang. <laughs> Uh, and what we used Don't to do, go the, there. the lights, okay. no, the lights would stay on till 11 o'clock without anybody complaining. And that was all factories. And we would go, play lefty because you didn't want to lose the ball. You'd bat your opposite way. And it was really enjoyable. So would a lefty bat righty? Yes. Cause we don't want to lose the ball. <laughs> yeah. And, they're expensive. And, yeah. And well, we had a lot of fun. And then in the winter we would go to Alco, uh, Alco Gravure, which is now a, uh, that parking lot. Um, that would be where we would play uh, football. You're there are the plots in the park. And my father would be in the radio car and bring us down bar pies from Leo's after that. I mean, we were young, but it was it was really... You're a, just something. revving up here. I can tell. You're getting the juices going, all this memory Well, stuff. Timmy Calgary always reminds me of uh, of, uh, of things, too. So. Uh-huh. We have to get Timmy on, too. Yeah, Timmy. Will you help us recruit him? Definitely. Okay, Definitely. good. good, good. I should have told Timmy that we were on. Yeah. So 
Tell me about like kids getting along. Like, would you hang out with a certain crew and might get into at, diff other at groups? different age groups? Yeah. I know um, a Washington show is very close to Dominic Luciano and, and Bougie Nazi. That was his nickname. Um, and, and some of the others there, uh, Willow Avenue. Um, it was uh, a mix of us ethnic wise and I never knew anything else. I mean, as I was, I, I liked Cesar Velez just as much as I liked Billy Bang or Louis the Ear or the Wolf, uh, you know, and um, there was the older guys like Louis the Bird and Arthur Bentley and there was Jimmy Flora, uh, there was um, Felly, there was uh, uh, Ed, Eddie Mora who used to walk by and just wave and try to steal a can of oil from the oil rack. And he had the house, the only house that's left on that block, that old house, that was the Muir family. Um, but, you know, uh, Dennis Reynolds, uh, there was so many people that made that that neighborhood such a, a, a great neighborhood. The Johnson family, um, which was on the other house, Mojica. I remember Mojica when we were kids. He used to have the Chevrolet. He used to wear the, the big wide brim hat, the convertible Chevy, and the horn would have, ooga, ooga. And he was the city dog catcher. And that's how later on, and he also was a... He, he took the numbers and he became uh, famous with the cabs. And he's still alive, Mohica. So it is Mohica cabs. Yes, he he gradually went to that. Now I I don't think they're in business anymore. Yeah. He's about he's near ninety. He lives in Jersey City Heights. Him and his wife Mary, really nice people too. But there was a sense of um, you know there was Charlie Bernazard. There was some tough guys there. Um, there was the the Davis sisters, um, Marita. That I mean, um, Joanne that works for the city, Marita. Lori, Joanne, were, who works on the mayor's office. Yes, Joanne grew up on uh, on Willow Avenue. Oh, I'd love to have her. Yes, Joanne. Too. Wow. Unfortunately, she just uh, lost her husband. Yeah. And, and what a good family they oh, were. Nice. James Davis is the deputy director for deep for DPW here now, Environmental Services. Um, and their father grew up with my father, uh, and with the Cunnings. The Cunnings are another uh, wonderful family. Um, you know that uh, I had good fortune to uh, grow up around. Uh, with the, they all belong to the St. Lucie's. A Catholic War Veterans Post, and uh, tell me, I don't think I know much about that post. Uh, it, it borders Hoboken, Jersey City. Right now, it's the so St. Lucy's, uh, which is used as a shelter, shelter now. Yes. And they're going to knock and that church down. I know, which yeah. broke my father's heart when they closed the church. Uh, you know, they used to do the Holy Name and march into Hoboken back and forth. So, um, so it was, it was very active. Yes, oh, right. extremely active. Yeah, I don't know why. There's. A... It was said. I'll say this as a young police officer. We were taking a prisoner to the county jail on a run, prisoner run, and we're at the light. And I seen when that first became uh, when they decided to empty it out. They just threw out all the Catholic War member member of the Catholic War veterans. I hate that. Which and when I came back after the prisoner run, most of it was gone. And it was, it was a shame. Right. So was, people the, who don't know, we're talking right by the Holland Tunnel. Right and, there. Yeah, definitely. Right there. And uh, ironically also, uh, most of the families are gone from there. And one widow knew me when I was uh, uh, campaigning up in the Heights. She was in the, in the, in the senior citizen home. Uh, her husband had been the commander, Gretton. And she said, you know, of course I'm going to vote for you. And I'm looking at her and she said... I said, Mrs. Gretton. She said, that's right. I was dancing with your mother when she broke water with you. <laughs> so uh, the, 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 the connections are, and you know, there's something that you just can't, there's bonds there. There's softball constantly, uh, you know, softball leagues. Uh, my father and a Hoboken police team. Then they had the St. Lucie softball team. Uh, you know, there was fastball leagues. They played king in the court up in the Weehawken Stadium, the Hoboken police. As, uh, what's, I hate that. What's king in the court? That is a, a professional team of four players, a pitcher, a catcher. I think it's one outfielder and uh, two infielders, some, some configuration like that. And they would go around the country barnstorming and to raise money for charity. My father was the union president of the Hoboken PBA, and he also ran the softball team, bowling team. They had so many bowling teams in the uh, police, uh, Hudson County Peace Officers League, which kind of exists now but there was good memories and, and all of that. And then somewhere in there is the pal uh, pal yeah my uh I, my father was part of the pal for years um and then for some reason it fell it fell dormant on the a couple administrations ago i was probably one of the last uh, directors on the on the charter i don't know what happened to it since but pal was very strong in hoboken by the library was the PAL office, Mr. Haggerty, Mr. Coppola, um, who are unfortunately deceased, Chippa, Chippa Knapp, 
Um, there was so many good people that coached um, Jack Maraca, uh, another Hoboken athletic legend, uh, you know, that, the police, there was more of a community. It's unbelievable to say uh, there, then, you know, then it was such a strong bond uh, between the police, I guess maybe because the police and fire teachers had to live in town. And then when there was the civil disturbances towards the end of the sixties, I think the bond broke. The ragamuffin parade was a very big endeavor that the police and fire did together. And it was such a wonderful time. I just found the films, the real to reels on them, but it was a good time. Good. Okay. We got a few more images here. Not that we need them. We could just talk and talk. <laughs> oh, that's a nice shot. Who okay. are these folks? Okay. Starting left to right. My good friend who I haven't seen in years, that's Victor Cabrera. Uh, the next gentleman, he's unfortunately passed away from brain cancer. That's Michael Mangello, the judge's brother, Peter. Ah. That's myself. That's Councilman Mike Cricco over my shoulder. <laughs> and um, Michael uh, went on to be a councilman. He's a famous Dr. Cricco's son, a large family, lived on Castle Point. And that's Ralph Michael Corrado. Uh, he was a Hoboken fireman. Um, he still, I think, lives in town. And we were at St. Peter and Paul. I think we were in about the sixth grade, fifth to sixth grade, right. the most there. I mean, it's funny. It's like a blurry shot, but it really just exudes joy. And uh, we, it was a good group. We had yeah. uh, good people. A lot of people that uh, still around. Tommy D. Pascal was in. It. We had a class of forty-five. It was an amazing class. Um, Pan American Coffee. I had the pleasure of going to school with Adelia too. Adelia Montanez. Some wonderful girls. Jeannie Kassler, uh, Connie De Janeiro, Jacqueline. Um, <laughs> Uh, it was just a lot, a lot of people. So would it have been co-ed? Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, yes. We were, sure. The school was co -ed. All our grammar schools were co-ed. Right. But sometimes the Catholic yes. school could be separate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, we had a lot of, every school, well, G had three, three eighth grade classes, I think, when I was in. Right. Sure. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> that is one of the first ragamuffin parades. That's your dad. Is, That's uh, my father. Yes. Yeah, all the chief. police and fire dressed up. Uh, to the left to right, that's, he just passed away. That's Phil DeFalco's wife, Angie. She might've just passed away on the left. That's Marie Cotillo. That's my mother. And that's, uh, Gloria Cotillo and my You father. said Cotillo, yes. right? Yes. And was a member of that family, yes. the lady wrestler? Yes. That's, that would be Grace. Mar Grace. Her husband was Grace's uh, brother. Okay. Carmen Cotillo. Do you know anything about sure. that? Can you tell us about Grace a little oh, Grace, bit? Most I, people I, are not going to no. know. But yeah, Grace Cotillo went on to fame as a, a, a woman wrestler. Uh, her brother was Carmen. Uh, uh, the, the Cotillo that I, I grew up with would be Tommy. He was a fireman in, in Hoboken. Um, Marie, I think they lived in Florida. They moved to Florida. That's the Hoboken High School field. That's right. where the competition was held for uh, best costume. And uh, that court is the one over there that we played the softball on. That's factory now is all. That used to be BRB, the bra company, one of the largest uh, in the United States. Um, and, and those buildings are still there in the background, right? Yeah, Isn't the, the one on yeah. the left, uh, Cube Smart? I yes, think? and the one on and the, the one right on the is right Ian's is... place, that plays something. Uh, yes, yeah. There's and there's the Michael this... Chang thing would be right there. Right, tennis <laughs> cards to the right, but the smokestack is still there. I'm I don't sure. think the water tower is. I don't think no. the, the platform might be, but uh, the chimney is still there. And the field and was rocks and dirt that we played on. Right. I remember we used to shag uh, uh, baseballs. My cousin Michael and I for Leo LaForger and Kevin Smith. They were older than us. They used to give us a quarter to, in the summer to go field the uh, baseballs. Leo was a, a great catcher and Smitty was a great pitcher. A whole book and high in the Bill Better Boys. Right. And so that that is the track today. And that's where football games are played. And, and a much uh, better field. Yeah. Which hopefully, I, from what I've been told, I'm going to build a high school on that field. Which Timmy could tell you about. Right. And then what? The stadium, the track on the roof? Or, yes. Yeah. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Are you going to keep those tennis Oh yes, scores, yes, right? yes. That was right. that's okay. a promise. Okay. But tennis is very popular. We're archiving this, so you know this will <laughs> we'll have to maybe go they, back uh, to this in two years. I, I I don't know how old I was there. Maybe about eight or nine. Right. Yeah. Right. Cool. I love. <laughs> ah. I received communion, and that's my grandmother, uh, in the projects. It's, uh, she lived in the projects. Uh, the federal as now. Uh, called the housing authority uh and i was that's my father's mother uh she passed on in, in the 70s early 70s but uh, right 
It's that just, pillow pops, doesn't it? <laughs> she still was in mourning. My grandfather uh, was passed away by oh, then. So but she wore black. Yeah, that's, that's the, the old Italian family yeah, that is. Definitely. Yeah. But she assimilated. I mean, she oh, spoke yes. English. And, yes, my grandfather yeah. didn't, and that's uh -huh. the only Italian I ever heard. My grandfather used to enjoy watching the westerns on TV. He put me on his lap. He'd have a peachy wine with peaches in it, and he'd let me sip it. Or he'd have his uh, espresso or demi tasse coffee with the the chestnuts. That was his big thing, and the uh, those those uh, pastries with the rum that I couldn't. I hated them. <laughs> Too sweet. Oh, I never liked them. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Okay. That's my Uncle Jerry. He looks like an original Don from- So this is Louise and Jerry. Right. He now, is the Jerry. That's the interesting what I was telling you about, now that you have it blown up, how that is wide, because when it was a hotel, the three buildings, that is the, that was probably the entrance. So, you, so you're saying from the used magazine sign up until- Charms, the, Charms Beauty Salon. Right. The used magazine sign and Louise and Jerry's were all one building. Okay, they and Louise Jerry's is to the right? Right. Okay, I got it now. This is what I was told uh, sure. by Mr. Peeney, who lived in that store, which was uh, his family's store when he was a kid, Peeney right. and Sons. Peeney Plumbing. And he's, right, he's the one who told me that. Uh-huh. And uh, what's it say in the middle? Bob Hall. Bob um, Hall. Which was clothing? I, no, yeah. it was a stamp. It was a stamp, little soldiers, novelty trick store. Oh, as That's as far back as oh, I remember. Oh. What it was before that, I don't know. Yeah, sure. sure. That's Elysian Savings, which is now BCB. Right, uh, right. That was the, that on the corner was the modern lunch that was owned by the Gastelius. And then there was um, the, one of the original Four Seasons um, uh, sister owned the candy store with her husband. That would be Budgie's grandparents. Um, and then you had Charm's Beauty Salon, which was over. I remember the Charm Beauty Salon. Yeah, that, that, that only went out. Uh, that, that, I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> could you be figured, 10 years, they just so. celebrated. Uh, jump, yeah, Jumbo's on the corner, right, Zeus, which before that was the modern lunch. Zeus made a good point. After the Gastelius left out, it became Jumbo's. Okay, okay. Um, so we often say, let's play the Washington Street game. Well, Trying down the block is one of the original store butcher stores. Two, right. two, two or three down from um, Elysian Savings there was a, the butcher sign. Right. You had Lamel's on, on Hudson Street. You had that. And, uh, you know, you had Trulio's. Right. They're all pretty much German. Too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, you know, that's an obvious, you know, right now we have an exhibit in the museum about Washington Street. And, uh, you know, back in the day, it was pretty much, except some of the banks, you know, pretty much mom and pop stores. Yes. Right? And not only that, too, when the, when the city uh, originally had a large Jewish population, right. they were the most of the merchants on First Street. I know when we went, to, when we were kid, uh, kids, your parents took you down to uh, Mickey Finn's right. or to Benny's mm -hmm. um, or uh, on Wall Street, the guys, Mars, you had to get a suit, you know. Uh, and again, if you see it by what I'm saying, there was so much ethnic diversity Unfortunately, civil disturbances came along because there was some injustices that uh, were done. But uh, growing up, I never felt any of that. Uh, I think it's the way you're raised and by the fact that we were so close, uh, you know, growing up to so many people. There was midday, there was midnight. And, um, you know, I'm thinking of, there's so many different names for everybody. As I'm going along, I'm trying to throw out more nicknames for you. But um, <laughs> we're going to have to make a list. Oh, I, there's it's a, almost like a rap. I song. may have an original list that my father had of the police nicknames for you. I can give you really that. that'd be cool. Yeah, because those things get lost right. right now. Next door to the bar was a um, there was a factory that was that bowling alley that you're talking about. Right. That was in and when I was a, a kid, that was a garment factory. Benny, he was a nice guy. And he used to always come to my my aunt's and he used so to wear the a garment factory on Washington yes, Street. Yes, HB Ward was the insurance company upstairs. Right next door was the um, the travel agency, an Italian travel agency, and that was Benny's Garments. That's before. Then afterwards came Green Gal uh, came Queens Green Gallery Hallmark. That all right, came afterwards. Those are eighties. Yeah, yes. Yeah. But Benny was a nice guy. Uh huh. And then across the street you had the. Uh, <laughs> So we've gone from Benny to Farrah Fawcett, uh, quite the leap. Um, so we, I know you, uh, during your career as uh, uh, a policeman, you had the privilege of getting to a lot of, know a lot of notables, but this may be something else. I, yeah, this is kind of ironic. 
I was only, I think, 19, 19 there. At 20. I, was in, I was in college and I was a big Farrah Fawcett fan. She had just the first time. Did you have the poster? Charlie. I have the, I still have the original poster. And <laughs> later on, uh, Farrah had sent the, the little gold Fawcett. Uh, and the, I have the, the, the mirror and the rug is I can't find. But um, it's kind of ironic. That was our softball team from B&R Auto Parts, which was on 1107 Willow. And what happened was there were uh, warm-ups and she was called, well, to start the story off, she was in Hoboken to film part of the movie at the old Macy studio on 14th. I forgot, Burning Bed, I think the name of it was. We don't even know that one. Yes, they were filming in a uh, Macy's. Burning Bed? I think it was the, I think that was the name of it. And um, she, what you call it, uh, my father was in charge of the detail and he knew I liked Farrah Fawcett. So he told that she had her own California bodyguards and then my father and them also uh, were around her. So he said, come on down here. We're going to introduce you. We're going to say, we're going to say you're um, a cop. <laughs> and it was, so what happened was she was so cool. She was so nice, Farrah. Uh, I'll never forget that about her. What a wonderful person. And uh, we gave her one of our softball jackets, our warm up jackets. And she took it. And then she had, uh, I have a gold faucet with Farrah on it. And I have the, uh, uh, she was very nice. We actually went up to, to New York with her too. Um, she had gone on to Studio 54 and unfortunately, tragic, uh, tragically, she suffered and died from cancer. But I, that was the first, uh, first, I was really like in shock. And um, So I think you're actually in the Macy's Parade studio. We're in the studio. And we're looking right. at some we're old in the floats studio. in yes. the background. Yes. I know I'm supposed to be focused on Farrah, but I always like to look oh, in no, the backgrounds. No, no, no. And I see like that's classic. Like oh yeah, I was like, float. I'm stunned that I'm with Farrah yeah. Fawcett. <laughs> yeah, and you actually have stick embroidered on your jacket. That's our, yeah, that's our one of our softball. We went won a championship. I forget what within the. Gotcha. In the, in the but you weeks. have a picture of Farrah with your team jacket, B and R on it. That's and, and B and R Auto. That's not born and raised, is it? <laughs> no, B and R Auto originally when it was on Willow Avenue, tenth and eleventh, the two owners were Babe and Red. Okay. Okay. When it was where that was, it was there where, before Johnson's Furniture Store, and then which later became a barber shop. Then it moved to Eleventh and Willow when the Roa family bought it, and then my father was involved with it. Too. Okay, okay. And we're moving on to more notable. Oh no, this is this is uh, in the backyard. That's uh, yeah, that's in Elise's. That's on uh, Tenth Street. Uh, Seeing where people used to put the laundry out on the poles. Yeah. Uh, that uh we're, we're playing basketball we had the basketball rim there we either went uh you played there first to warm up we go to 10th street courts if you lost you went to uh we hawking uh before the tunnels and if you lost there then you went up on top uh, behind um, the port authority building which was but you lost the basketball you had to be careful to go into the tunnel so that was the they had um facilities for sports on the roof of it was in the back of the building which you would uh, was overlooking the tunnel right we play on cold nights there because the the uh, competition was so intense in the 10th street courts you had lucky with one guy lucky had a lot of a lot of really good basketball players with the ball actually could it actually go down onto the oh you mean um, on the, the one by the tunnel sure yeah. it happened to us we used to bring three balls <laughs> you know all the time but this um, is my cousin michael he was very good michael right. tatara we did playing. an exhibit on the lincoln and holland tunnel and i remember we had aerial shots you know taken over time and by i think they were later so the sports thing had been oh it's gone down. yeah that was gone but, we but they actually had tennis courts up there really too. i didn't know that yeah. that had to be yeah. after the basketball courts yeah. And, and interestingly, the building there, that's where the original restaurant, that's 304 10th Street. That at one time was a milk uh, dairy stable. Okay. Because sure. Uh, uh, We've seen too. that in different. And that's, that's where all the Hoboken What's the hunting. building in the background? That, Je that is Jesse Ray Co. Company. Uh, that, went, that was a plastic factory that also went on fire. Okay. There was a big fight. It was all plastic. It, it went on fire. Uh, I, I think Ray, uh, J Jesse Ray, I think he owned that one or the one next to it. But that was factories. That whole area was factories. So what's there now? I mean, it's got to be how you know residential. Oh, it's all residential yeah. now. It's yeah. all condos. Right. See, that's the back of the gas station. Right. Now Eric was saying street hockey on top of the tunnel. Oh, see there that? we are. We yeah. played street hockey. Oh, so everyone, wow. yeah, in the tennis courts. You see that? And I didn't know that we even tennis courts, Eric. Yeah. When I we think were there, they was came later. The yes. You know, they had to take so. the rims down. It was probably because the bulls were going right. in. And yeah, the picture I saw is just like littered with tennis balls just all over the place but it so. was you know what we, we always found something to play you had four corners with the four sewers 
um, and being turned upside down. Dennis Reynolds used to like, they, they used to pull him to get the ball if it went down the sewer. Here's and, Roger. Uh, what an amazing memory Tony has and what a great re resource for Hoboken history. Thank you, Roger. Nicely put. Nice Thank you. Fun. You can see the shape of the yard. Now when you go there, it's a fancy house they built there. Then they moved the restaurant after Marty's luncheonette. Move, uh, Marty's uh, cl dry cleaners moved on 10th. Uh, my uncle moved the restaurant to um, uh, right there on the corner. And uh, Michael and uh, built the house there. There could be a koi pond there now, right? <laughs> <laughs> I remember we, we did a solemn. He had an alligator. And we did a solemn ceremony <laughs> burying the alligator in the tree bed when he died <laughs> in the tree. It was one tree and it was sugar. John, we used to be the dishwasher. We used to tease him. And one time I threw a can of pickles in his dishwasher. He came up and threw a cleaver at us. That's being our auto parts. That's, okay. That is uh, junior. You um, got any of those uniforms around? You know, I got looking back. I, that was, uh, let me tell you where you worked there. You had, we, uh, auto parts, Learning about cars was important that day. People used to, on Saturdays, change their oil in the street, which now you couldn't do. Either EPA or people would be calling up. But the people that didn't have much, this is how they took care of themselves and their vehicles. And it was that was a tough block. That was a that block came down in '85. Mm -hmm. That's when uh, I forget the Australian, uh, uh, not the Australian, New Zealander. Uh, he bought it. He bought the whole block for only a couple hundred thousand dollars. Right, right, right. Um, he was Murray Connell. Murray did Connell. the Union Club too. Yes. I mean that, yes. I think that well, was he did. That was his second project after Willow Avenue. Right. But BNR held on for a few more years. Um, mm -hmm. BNR didn't didn't come out until um, in the in the eighties. I remember because I was supposed to. Uh, I was hoping to purchase it. Right. Um, and and ironically, what one gas station left in Hoboken? Yeah, M Amir remembers me because when Mir first came and opened up, I was like 16 delivering auto parts. Right. And Mir remembers me to this day. He okay. bought it. That was. Um, so he's been there. Oh, yeah. Milo's. He's been there. Whew. Mir's there. I wasn't a police officer. Mir's there almost 45 years. I bet. Right. So we're talking about the Sunoco station on the corner. Right. Of Willow that was a Gulf station originally. Originally Gulf. And across the street was D&G Gulf. Right. No, no. Mir was originally an Exxon station. Where Trader Joe's is was D and G Gulf, mm -hmm. okay, and that was the uh, A and P, which is now the um, CVS. Keep going. What else is in that geographical area? Well, you had the Hoboken Motorcycle Club was right, right next door. That's their original uh, site. Then you had uh, was the uh, traffic lounge on, yes, the corner, on the corner, which, which was a wild. That was a wild Tell place. Tell me a story about traffic lounge. Huh, where you want to start? I mean, there was more fights, more shootings. Uh, there was, uh, it was a, uh, also, a uh, uh, house of ill repute. Um, Upstairs or downstairs? Uh, that was a, well, <laughs> Olga, that was Olga. And, uh, <laughs> then, you know, it was, uh, whole book was a lot of action. Uh, before my time, the gas station across the street was a hotel that the detectives used to go to. Um, I'm always asking the question, what the name of it was, it was told to me many years, but I don't remember. And the God, uh, the Malibu diner, uh, the family was always good to us, whether it be police officers or when I bartended up at the Liberty, we used to go there after, uh, you know, bartending. And it was, you know, what place was packed. There was always Liberty fights. Liberty on there. 14th right. Street. Right. That was my uh, Phil Mercurio and Joe Mercurio. Phil's married to my cousin. That was their place. And they had all the workers from Bethlehem Steel right. come in there. They had the lunch, Angie and, and, um, and uh, the Mercurio family, they did a, a wonderful job with that. Liberty Tavern would now be. It was the first disco in Hoboken. That's oh, what we did. Oh, really? It was the first disco. But we now a Japanese restaurant. Oh, oh that's think, right, right, right. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> right. It's a Japanese restaurant. And you have uh, uh, what you call it, where the bistro is. That was the Quixote. I think the El Quixote. El Quixote. Yeah, El Quixote. Yeah. And then down the, down the block, um, uh, I forgot what was before the uh, Spanish restaurant that was there. Yeah. And that's before the Madison when Vizetti owned it, when it was a, a dump. Oh, and man. Wanted to go in. Yes, definitely. You know, Dave was, Carney's place Yes, now. Dave Carney. Then oh. it was an Exxon station on Bloomfield, 14th. That was Syke and Dick's okay. on 14th and Bloomfield. Uh, that was a small ex an Exxon station, too. There was gas stations all over the place. Right, but and then now? Arujo Tire is where the uh, furniture company is on um, 14, uh, 14th and Willow. Okay. That was right. Arujo okay. Tire. He he died unfortunately when he got uh, a car went off the lift and ran him uh, really? went into him. Yes, the family uh, then moved to Florida. And and we're talking about where Bataglia yes, was. Yes, that was yeah. Arujo Tire. Right. One of the, he was a great guy too. 
And then wow. you had stall soap across the street. Right. Then you had Macy's and you had, I, I bought my son's clothes. You had the, uh, uh, the coat f factory that was yes, there, Burlington right. coat. Right. And for years, oh, that's been dormant. That place. Yeah. They, and then the Macy's studio. And that right. was, uh, I had the good fortune, the history there. My father did it from 1970 till he retired in 1990. I did it. I was in charge of the detail from 1990 till they left in 2010. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, 2000. They were gone. They're gone already 20, 20 yeah. years. You're this talking be, about bringing the, the parade yes. for the Thanksgiving the floats, Day Parade, yes. which was such a great tradition because yes. yes. Hoboken school kids would get the Interesting out. about that's a uh, junior, Jose Roa. Uh, uh -huh. His family came from Cuba. Huh. And my uncle gave them jobs in the Exxon, the Exxon station. Um, and if his father was a great mechanic. Right. And Junior started there when he was six when he came from Cuba. They, they, they were so well known. They owned the home on Court Street. They owned the home on 11th Street. Then they moved to Weehawken. And uh, I got Junior lives down the shore. Mm -hmm. He was a good man. Castro Motor Oil, Quaker State. Right. Um, so... We're going to speed it up a little bit here. Go ahead. And uh, ah, great shot. So where are we? This was Gartner's uh, uh, clothing store on, which is now, I think, um, the mayor's uh, campaign headquarters. Right, right. So um, I know it as Lalo's? Lalo's. Okay. It was Lalo's, but it was Gartner's before that. Oh, interesting. That was the name of okay. it for many years. Ah, Gartner's okay. for many years from like yeah. the 40s on. Sure. I think his father had it. Okay. So it yeah. might have been even back farther than that. Sure. He had quality stuff, and I had gone over there to pick up something for my father. I think I was about 16 here, 15 or 16. Right. Pretty cool. I'm not sure if that's St. Peter. No, that's a softball. That right. one's softball. We're so playing. was baseball your favorite sport? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I mean, uh, I wasn't as good as my son or anybody else, but I was honored to be you on the team. enjoyed it. Yeah. Looked pretty serious. <laughs> that's nice my shot. son. Very cool. Yeah, very proud angel. Um, yeah. And uh, that, that was a young police officer. I think I was just on the job. So how old is your son now, Ren? Oh my god, my son's Sorry. forty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Circa. Okay. Circa. Cool. That's him playing uh, PAL right. football. Uh -huh. That's uh, is that that that's your first AstroTurf field in Hoboken? The first time they turfed the field. Right. Right. That's uh, he's in grammar school. I think that was uh, getting ready for uh, grammar school graduation. Uh huh. That is where is that? picture i'm not sure with that i think that i'm not sure it might have been my aunt's right house. i'm not sure what that was i love the sweaters yes <laughs> this was the babe ruth team i coached we uh -huh. won the championship chris campos is on that team wow uh a few others that went on to that's, and that's the, the old, that's Costello. the world war ii veteran statue yes, in the right background in yes. which doesn't get uh, uh, highlighted too much that was a good group of young men in fact it was kind of ironic that was the night we got pulled off the field uh, when the city was going under the, the, the chief called martial law and he, because the band had gone, uh, the town gone crazy. We had to go around and close all the bars because it got so rowdy and wild. Could you won or, Oh no, 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 no. This was to do with the m musical entertainment that was going on. I forget okay. the name of the band that might've been, ah, I forget the name, uh, something 47 or uh, 47, I think was playing here. Somebody was playing and the chief. I got, they sent that down the field to come on. You got to go into work and all that. Wow. And they called in all the off duty police. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, it's um, a proud moment. I was, I became a sergeant. So that's 1989, late in right. 89. And your dad. Yes. In his office. Right. So you're not both wearing number seven at the same time. No, seven. Are you? No, but the sergeant's badge ironically was his sergeant's badge. Okay. Yes. So which you got was it again. A, yes. Okay. That's the only badge that have numbers. Just a coincidence, right? Um, no, but only all police officers and sergeants have numbers. As you go up in rank, there's no more numbers. Oh, interesting. Okay. Didn't know that. Didn't know that. And Donna Mullen just moved into Hoboken in August, enjoying the presentation. Thank you, Donna, so for tuning in. That is so cool to get old and new, right? Oh, and that's uh, what makes this town vibrant. Yeah. We need the new blood, and the new blood is what's resurrected. Hoboken. Right. And the new blood is interested in Hoboken history, yes. you know, and then they become like yeah. they've been here for 20 years. Classic formal shot, right? Yes. Uh, this was done to make sure that we could be identified by people if they came in. It was in the photo array. Um, really? Yes. Like that's him. That's me. Okay. That, that was I was a lieutenant in that uh, shot. 
Right, right. And ah. Danny Aiello. Yeah. Could we? That was, I think, uh, he was involved. There's, that's by Marine. Uh, sure. No, there was an event by the Little League field, I think. Okay. That yeah. was Danny was there, and that's when he got involved um, uh, in the in the restaurant. Uh, Tuta Pasta was on oh, second right. and Washington yeah, on the Street. corner. Yes, he, was. he had intentions of moving to Hoboken too. Eventually, he got sick, and then uh, the the owner had uh, some problems with the, his family, and they were mm -hmm. he, they lost the business. Sure, sure. Wow. Huh. So, in the job, you meet a lot of notables. It was a kind of coincidence. I was assigned the security detail to lock down the area around the pad station. Senator Menendez and Governor Corzine were coming in to speak and have an event open. They had to set up a stage. So when we shut the area down at four o'clock, two gentlemen come up to me. At that time, uh, he had just, um, he was a senator. Right, he's pre-president. Right, right. He's running for president? Uh, no, not or even no? yet. No, He didn't make the decision. And he come up to me with his, an, another gentleman who was a photographer with him and say, excuse me, where can we get coffee? <laughs> and I uh, said to him, okay, we're I'm happy to be going for one too. So we went for the coffee talking and uh, he also uh, autographed uh, his book. Uh, I think Joel uh, got the books for us and the, and the, the pre uh, then president uh, author uh, signed them. And then later on, he, when he met, when I met him again, when he was the president, when uh, near Air Force One, it was a, another funny story, but uh, we'll get into that where he recognized, remembered me and he autographed the picture because uh, I was told, you know, the secret service said, why don't you get that autograph? Because they had lived in Hoboken, a lot of the agents. And well, I says, ah, you know, oh, he's the president. Now he's going to autograph, but, 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 all right. And then they set it up and I went out and met him on Air Force One out in uh, Kennedy. Cool. When he came cool. in to do a, something with uh, Jess Sarah Jessica Parker and Matthew Broderick. Uh-huh. Well, Willie Mays. I had the pleasure of uh, being around Willie. My father was an avid Willie Mays fan at Senator Menendez. And that was at the uh, Pegasus in... Um, in the Meadowlands racetrack, the old racetrack. Right. Everyone looks happy. He was quite a character, President Clinton, uh, at, and uh, Governor Cosner, but President Clinton was quite a character. I remember I was on the, that was, I was on the mayor's bodyguard detail. And I had the security clearance to get into them, and Mayor Roberts didn't. It was kind of ironic. It was, it was so, that, that took place down in, I think, New Brunswick, we were. Right. And uh, he was, I'll tell you, the, the ladies loved him. Every All the women were swooning over President Clinton. Right, right. Um, but I remember at one point, uh, Corazon was living here. Menendez was living here. And of course, Bernie Kenny. And they sort of represented that, you know, pretty high up. And you know what? Officials. They were, they were uh, very, very good to be around. I was fortunate to be assigned to the security detail uh, for uh, Governor Corzine when he was here. I mean, obviously as the state police, but you know, we were coordinated with them. Um, and you know, they were, they were all, they never, they treated, they treated us well. Ah, huh. uh, so we're getting to the end and, uh, this is a great before and after picture. Yeah. Who do we got? Okay. On the left is Michael Tataro. Um, and on the right is Michael Lisa. Michael and his brother gave me the name Stick. Mike, we, we, we were like brothers. So you're um, good buds. Yes. Yes. To this day, um, Michael lived in Montfield. Michael's father was Jija, who uh, had the restaurant. He was so charismatic with the jokes he would play on people. Um, you know, he used to, there was one guy, if a guy was a moocher, he would put paper in his sandwich. In his sandwich. <laughs> he, he also, when they, one time they, uh, they got my, uh, uh, they got, the guy's name was Joe Romano. They got him drunk and they laid him out like it was a coffin <laughs> and they put the, the rose on him. There was so many good memories. That was, that's Michael's father. Michael's father, Tataro, was a legendary bartender at the Clanbroth house. Uh, and he also then worked at Louise and Jerry's till he passed away. He was a wonderful man. And uh, I love these two like, like brothers. And that's, we were about, that's on Willow Avenue. I don't know if that's 10th or 11th. And we were, I think, 16 or 17 years. Seven, no, we're 17 years old. So 70s, 17. some point? Yes. And yeah. this is years later. That's great. That's great. And, uh, I got more hair now. I don't know what. Oh, that's. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask. I just know that. that. No. I just washed my hair. We took that picture. <laughs> that was, that's, that's, that's an old picture, too. I think, I think it was, I don't know what year, but that's, um, it's got to be at least 20 years after that. First oh, well, yes, yeah. without a doubt. So, more than that. Yeah. The first one someone had, I never seen that. Right. Uh, that came from, a, a, I think, the Olsen family. had. had I was on Midnight's when somebody put that up on the computer. I hadn't seen that one. Either. Right. 
Ryan, can we go back to the shot just before this one? <laughs> okay. Are you in the same position? Yes, too? we did it. So we put it in the oh, same position. We you knew when we took the so picture. You knew this yes. Picture. Yes. The boat wow. Michaels had a Michaels, a Michaels, the head photographer at the Meadowlands racetrack. And uh, Michael's a successful businessman with cars and uh, I think property in Florida. Mm -hmm. And his brother, Fran, was a Hoboken High coach. And I'm still very close to He's a fire dispatcher. Right. And Excellent. Michael's brother, James, he served in the Navy. He lives in Florida. And that's who really initiated the name Stick. Okay. Wow. So you've had a lot of friends for life. Yes. Yes. Michael lives in Manalapan and Michael lives in Montvale, but we stay in touch. Um, uh, it's important to me to, you know, never forget where you're from. And as I said, I, I, I had the good fortune. I loved a lot of the people that I grew up with. And to me, nationality never mattered. I never knew anything, but, uh, you know, good people, uh, as I said, and, uh, you know, I had a wonderful experience, uh, with, uh, I learned to speak Spanish at a young age because we had a lot of Spanish friends and the uh, Puerto Rican community is important to me. The Irish community, I'm the last Irish grand marshal. <laughs> and um, the Italian community, we do the Columbus. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very close to the, the temple, uh, to, to the Rabbi Scheinberg, uh, my, and my mosque in, the, in up in Jersey City that I represent. And, you know, I think it's important, whether you be a police officer or an elected official, to establish and keep these contacts. And how you're raised tells you how you're going to be uh, in life. And for example, last night I spoke uh, with a few police officers at a demonstration up in Martin Luther King Drive at the McLeod Bethune Center. And I think that you need, the community needs to know that uh, police officers, uh, for the most part, are good people. You know, if an apple's bad, you get rid of the bad apples. You don't destroy the, um, uh, the whole barrel. And we didn't mention, but I also had the honor and pr privilege of teaching in Hoboken High School. And uh, that was a wonderful experience. Uh, Charlie Tortorello was the principal. Uh, Ed Stinson, who I learned a lot. I learned a lot about football from Coach Stinson. He's a wonderful guy. He's doing wonders out in Seton Hall Prep. And uh, Hoboken High, uh, you know, there's not many times in life that you could say that you were involved in prof professions that you loved. And uh, I have no regrets uh, Police, of being a police officer, of being a Hoboken High School teacher, and now the honor of representing the people of Jersey City and Hoboken as a county commissioner. Uh, and I, I, again, I think what your museum does here uh, is so important that people know what our past is about, our present, and where we're going in the future. All well said. And you live in Hoboken, yes, too, I've, uh, and uh, love the town. Yeah, and it's interesting. Where I live was beautiful, would never be knocked down now, all those beautiful homes from Marine View. Right, right. And it's, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, brother. But uh, I, I, I think that... Uh, Anything I could do and, and to help uh, Bob, you or your staff, it's an, always an honor to be involved with You've this. always been helpful. No, but it's good. You know, we probably talk more now than we have ever talked oh, it's good. before. It's and good. It is good. You know, it feels good. really it's, good. It, it feels does. important and cathartic in and, a way. And a lot of things I'm going to bequeath to this museum uh, that, um, you know, I think uh, will be a, a legacy to certain institutions. Um, and, uh, you know, certain mementos of my, uh, my uncle, as a matter of fact, well, uncle worked for, I didn't even know Bethlehem Steel Yard. Is, I knew it. it was right where we're sitting. Right. Yeah. It was Fleischman's or something. Fleischman's. Uh, Fletcher's. Fletcher's. W &A Fletcher. Fletcher's. All right. And uh, he worked there. And uh, so many wonderful people that are still left in Hoboken that do contribute a lot. I mean, there's the, the T&M uh, construction company, the yeah. Cereals. Matt. They go back. Yeah. Uh, great uh, people. Sure. Mark Septembri. Yep. his father and and they built marine view and they built a, a lot of things here hard working men i think my comment would be that there's so many people that were hard working that grew uh, grew up in this town that came from other countries and wanted to make it better and i think the blending of all the different uh, ethnic groups has made this a, a great town i always think of um when you talk about the puerto rican experience raul morales and and what he's done uh you know uh and and how the assimilation has taken place and, uh, you know, we have so many uh, African-American leaders that uh, I, I know you did something with, with that, too. We talk about the first police officers of African-American, um, Rob Davis, Cecil Vincent, Gene Drayton, who was a, a coach before that. Uh, you know, you had first Hispanic police officer, Rafael Castillo, uh, Tony Rentas. And Ray Castillo and Dave Little were drafted for pro teams uh, as ball players. And yeah, Hoboken has an outstanding athletic history. 
And then you have, uh, you know, different uh, downtown, the different bars and the churches. There's so much that uh, that has gone on here and it's still going on and it's carried on. Now we have a, a, a wonderful Asian uh, population coming in too. And they have a lot to offer. And I think that, uh, and we have a mayor that's a, a Sikh. Um, and uh, I'm also, you know, Jersey City. I just was up at the Navarate Festival, which I enjoy every year. And I think it's important that uh, we keep all our cultures going and that uh, we never forget this is what makes Hoboken great. I'm just going to do a big shake. Thank you so much. Um, it was uh, the hour went quick. I hope it I didn't let anybody did. down. No, 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 no. Uh, and please spread the word about this experience. We'd oh, like to get yeah. more of your friends here. You We'd can come on my TV them. show. We talk uh, about it. Is it. Quid pro quo here. I definitely will do that. And uh, and I thank, thank you, you also to uh, your staff here that, yeah. that uh, yeah. kept this going. Did sure. A wonderful job. Um, so we're going to sort of segue out here. I usually do a few thank yous at this point. Uh, I'll mention that next week uh, our guest is Irene Sobolov. Uh, she is uh, grew up under the last name of Corman, the Corman family, which were mainstays here in Hoboken. And uh, Irene is uh, here in Hoboken still with her family, yeah. great family. And she'll she's going to have some good uh, uh, good speak, as we say. And then Bob Burt will be interviewed by Jack Silbert the following week. So we're kind of on a roll here. Uh, we got great guests. We got. We got a good host too. And I uh, want to thank Rand Hoppe, who's the producer of this show, the originator of this show. Uh, also want to thank people like Donald Chackett, uh, who in his estate planning thought of the museum, which was very fortuitous for us. And we're in his debt and he helps make things possible here. Uh, and that just reminding people that you this this uh, show is archived on YouTube. Simply go to the museum's uh, channel, YouTube channel, and put in Hoboken Talks or Anthony Romano, and I'm sure it'll come up. Uh, we also want to thank the New Jersey Historical Commission, which is a state agency that is the one agency we are most thankful for, for GOS funding and for special project funding and helped uh, provide some of equipment for this particular podcast. And uh, Applied Companies, who are someone I thank every day. We have uh, a long-term uh, connection with Applied, Joe Barry, Michael Barry, David and Barry. they are solid and thank them so much and really hope that you get a chance to visit the museum. Uh, we're at 1301 Hudson Street, and uh, our show here, of course, is Hoboken Talks, but we also have many programs, meaning not just a virtual program, but an in-person experience, and you can get that by checking out the new, fairly new exhibit uh, called The Avenue, A History of Washington Street. And obviously our conversation today connected a lot with Washington Street. It is the main artery of the town. You can tell history lots of ways, but using Washington Street as a way to start a discussion about the history of, of the town is kind of interesting. And we're very proud of this exhibit. So we are open six days a week. Uh, I could be preaching to the choir out there, but we did have a few people who are just, you know, new to Hoboken. So you may not even know we have a physical space. Uh, we also have an upper gallery exhibit, uh, which is a bit unique. And uh, it's photography and filmmaking by Joan Michelle. Uh, it's chronicling uh, a young skateboarder. And the name of the show is Caveman Built My Skateboard. And apparently Caveman is a skateboarding trick. Uh, so uh, that's something I learned in the course of this exhibit. Uh, so really, please uh, support this uh, program. Uh, if you ever want to donate to the museum, go to our website, hobokenmuseum.org. It's pretty easy. Uh, we accept Venmo, uh, Apple Pay, all the modern platforms. And uh, again, uh, we are... You know, we're probably most active on the weekends with events in the walkway. If you ever want to get a digital email about, you know, what we do, you can simply go on to the website, hobokenmuseum.org, and sign up for a digital newsletter that Melissa Abernathy puts together so nicely for us. 
And I think we are signing off. Thank you so much, Anthony. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Rand. Thank you, Rand.